Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about depreciation, okay? In particular, there are two types of depreciation. One you would have covered in year 11, which is known as straight line depreciation, and the other one, which is maybe a little bit of a new and unfamiliar concept, which is called the declining balance method. You've already covered a lot of the skills related to this, okay? Uh, as it's fairly similar to what we do when we calculate our compound interest. When we do the declining balance method, uh, we need to understand that many, many items that we have don't actually depreciate in value. So that means goes down in value um, by the same amount each year. Now, if we were doing straight line depreciation, that's exactly what would happen, but that's not always the case, okay? With the declining balance method, we decline by a little bit less each year. And that's because we're reducing the value of the asset, um, say a car, for example, um, by a percentage of the previous year. So if I have a car that's worth uh, $10,000 and I uh, decline it by 10%, it's now worth 10% uh, less, okay? We then use that uh, new amount at the end of that year um, to act as a principal on the next year. And we depreciate that by 10% again. And each year we depreciate by a little bit less every single time, okay? So what we need to understand is that we're not actually depreciating by a constant amount, okay? So a good way to sort of understand what's happening is uh, we're looking at the value of our asset as, as like a curve. You'll notice that uh, after each year, the curve begins to flatten out and that's because we're losing a little bit less value uh, every single time that we go through this declining, uh, this declining balance, okay? Now, what also happens when we're thinking about the declining, uh, declining balance method of depreciation is in the first couple of years, that's when we tend to lose the most value um, on whatever our asset is, okay? So uh, more often than not, your value of your car will often depreciate quite rapidly in the first few years and then flatten out. It'll still lose value each year, but it'll begin to um, flatten out as the years go on, okay? Now, understanding what the declining balance depreciation formula looks like, okay? It might actually look a little bit formula. It's here. You'll see some uh, S's and some V noughts and all of this sort of stuff. And they actually behave very, very similar to a formula that you're used to. And I might just point this out and then we'll talk about the terminology. You have seen before this formula. Now, this is a compound interest formula. Okay, where here we have our future value, here we have our, princ our principal, our present value, what we start off with, okay, and we have our interest rate inside of the bracket and N for the number of compounding periods. Now, some key things to point out, we use the compound interest formula when our asset is going up in value. So we put some money in the bank, we leave it there, and it begins to increase in value over time, okay? However, with depreciation, we're talking about it declining in value. Now you'll notice something really, really similar. They almost look exactly the same. We have this S, okay? So we call that our salvage value. So that's the value after depreciation. It will have gone down, all right? We say this V naught here, okay? That's the initial value of the asset or asset at, uh, the value of the asset at time zero. R is the depreciation rate rather than the interest rate. Again, we do all of the same things as before. We express it as a decimal and we take into account the fact that it's per period. So we get a yearly per annum interest rate. We adjust it if we have to calculate for monthly, um, monthly depreciation, all of that sort of stuff, okay? And then N, well, that's the number of periods, okay? So usually when we're doing declining balance method, most of the questions will be given to you uh, in the sense of it's declining at the end of each year, okay? The key thing that I'd like to point out to you that most students make a mistake on is this thing here. That is, there's a minus in this formula. Be very, very careful. Many students without thinking will put a plus because they're so used to the compound interest formula and it's a really easy mistake to make. All right, that would be a heed my words moment. Be very, very careful whenever you're doing declining balance depreciation, you want to make sure that you use a minus instead. Okay, very, very similar in behavior and very, very similar in approach. So let's get stuck in. We'll have a look at the first example. So taking a look here, all right, uh, Mr. Williams bought a new camper trailer for $34,500. Okay, so that is an important value. This here is our V0, our starting value, with an expected depreciation rate of 18% per annum. So that's how much it's going to go down by as a percentage each year. And it tells you in this question specifically to use the declining balance method 
to find its value correct to the nearest dollar after one year, okay? So let's get stuck into it. So it's always handy when we're doing these sorts of questions just to come off to the side and write our values, okay? So our V naught in this particular case, all right, our initial value is $34,500, okay? Our interest rate is 18% per annum. So we need to divide that by 100, okay? Because we want it written as a decimal. We don't need to adjust anything here because we are depreciating after each year, all right? N is how many periods of depreciation we have in this particular case is just one year. Okay, so substituting everything in the formula, I like to write my formula out so I don't forget anything. One minus R to the N, being very, very careful that I use some minus R. All right, and now calculate the salvage value, all right, of my camper trailer after I've had it for one year. Okay, so $34,500, all right multiplied by one minus 0 0.18, all to the power of one because it's in there for one year. Plug that into your calculator and you'll end up with a salvage value of $28,290 at the end of the first year. And that's what it's worth uh, correct to the nearest dollar. So be very, very, very careful um, when you're doing this, okay? All right, that you make sure that you have uh, the minus sign in there, okay? I really can't stress that enough, okay? So that's the value after one year. So in our next question, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the value after five years, okay? So after five years, our initial value doesn't actually change, right? We always start off with the same. It's like our principal, like we did in compound interest. The interest rate doesn't change. Sorry, I shouldn't say interest rate, I should say depreciation rate. Um, and our number of depreciation periods okay, does change because now we're doing it for five years. So everything behaves the exact same. We plug everything into our formula and we change the power now, instead of it being a one, it's for five because it's in there for five years. We calculate everything out, all right? And we'll end up with 12,790.5 dot, 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 dot. Okay, but we want it to the nearest dollar. Okay, so we round up. 12,791 dollars and we say to the nearest dollar I didn't write that in the first one okay I really should okay nearest dollar so just be very very careful when you're doing this now just have a little bit of a look this is a massive massive decline in value here compared to just one year okay however it will eventually to start uh, slowing down when um, you take into account that you're losing uh, less value of your asset over a longer period of time. Okay, all right. So let's have a little bit of a look at the next example. Okay, so part B, all right. What is the total depreciation after the first five years? Well, that's simple. We just take our original value, total depreciation, is equal to our starting value, our V naught, 34,500. Let me fix up that three. Minus what is left over, okay, at the end of five years. So this is our salvage value. All right, so 12,790. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put that into a calculator and we're going to calculate it. My apologies, that should be a one, okay? So once you plug this into your calculator, you'll end up with a value of 21,000. $709 as the amount that it's depreciated in the first five years, which is quite a lot, okay? So continuing on, let's have a little bit of a look at example two, okay? Now example two is the same idea. We're buying a piece of machinery from a logging company that costs $180,000. So that's our initial value, okay, of the asset. We're looking at this over three years, and after three years, we now have the salvage value of the machinery as being $75,937. Now, usually the sort of stuff like cars and machinery and all this sort of stuff depreciates in value. Uh, one, because they become outdated with uh, newer technology and two, because of wear and tear, okay? So we could imagine uh, a logging company using machinery and there's gonna be a lot of uh, wear and tear, all right? It also tells you in this question, that we're using the declining balance method here. So it specifically tells you that you're going to need to use the formula. The other thing to keep in consideration is that in this particular case, we're now calculating the rate of depreciation. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a look at how we jump into that. So just like before, what we're gonna do is we write all of our values out. So our V naught that we start off with, 
is equal to our 180,000. We highlighted that in the question, 180,000. Our interest rate, we don't actually know, but we're gonna put it there just to remind ourselves, okay? Our number of depreciation periods, we assume that we depreciate at the end of each year. So we're assuming that it's been in there for three years. Everything's looking pretty good so far, all right? Except this time we now have an extra salvage value, okay? And our salvage value is $75,937. Now, let's put everything into the formula. So our formula, remember, S equals V naught, one minus R, all to the power of N. So we have all of these, let's put everything in. I now have 75,937 for my salvage value. My V naught is 180,000, okay? Let me just double check. I've gone one extra zero, but that's okay. One minus whatever our interest rate is. We're not sure what that is yet, but we'll calculate it soon. All right. And then we have it in there for three compounding periods. Now it's a matter of making sure that we find our unknown here in the equation. Okay. So to do that, let's start moving things away. We're going to move the 180,000 first. Okay. That's a multiply. So we do the inverse operation when we take it to the other side. So it becomes 75,937 over 180,000. Now I don't simplify this down unless I absolutely can. I usually put it into my calculator and double check it. Okay, this won't simplify down for the moment because there's no uh, common factors in here. One minus R, uh, oops, sorry. One minus R uh, all to the power of three. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of this power here. Now to get rid of a power, remember if we're squaring something, the opposite is square. If we're raising something to the power of three or cubing something, the opposite is a cube root, okay? So we take it to the other side and now we take the cube root of both sides to balance the equation out. So seven, five, nine, three, seven over 180,000, okay? And we're taking the cubed root of that whole fraction. Notice I haven't simplified anything down yet. You can, as long as you store the value in your calculator. One minus R. Now we're almost there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to move this plus R, be careful that minus is attached. Sorry, this plus one, be careful the plus is attached to the one and the minus is attached to the R. So when we move this one over, okay, remember we're actually subtracting, we're not adding. Just be very, very careful with that. That's a really, really common mistake. So the value that we end up with for minus R, I'm just gonna switch the sides of the equation is equal to seven, five, nine, three, seven over one eight zero 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 zero, the cubed root of that whole fraction, and we are subtracting one from that whole thing, okay? Plugging this into your calculator, you'll end up with a value that looks like this, okay? Minus 0 0.250, and zeros continue on for a little while, let's continue a dot, 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 all right? Notice how they're both negatives, okay? We have a minus R and a minus on the other side. We're not actually done until we have the R by itself. To do that, the easiest way is to multiply both sides by a negative one. All right, keeping things balanced as we go. So now our positive R will equal positive 0 0.250 dot, 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 dot. Remember, we want an interest rate and we want to express it as a percentage. So to convert our decimal to a percentage, we take whatever value we have stored in our calculator, we times it by 100, and then we add a percentage sign right at the very end, okay? I'm going around to the nearest whole number. All right, so I'll end up with 25% per annum as my final answer for my depreciation rate. Okay, all right, so I hope this has been useful for you. Thank you very much.